Hey everyone! Today we're going to talk about completing all of the bench missions without using an attachment motor. Alrighty, I completed these missions with passive mechanisms, which are mechanisms that work without motors. So how are they powered? Two ways, triggers and robot movement. Here's what I mean. Let's look at the bench mission. There are three ways to score points on the bench mission. 15 points are scored when the backrest is removed, 10 points are scored when the bench is knocked down, and 10 points are scored for each of the cubes dropped into these rectangles. Let's go over passive mechanisms powered by robot movement first. On the front of this attachment, there are these angle beams which will be used to push the backrest out. Watch this. As the robot pushes the attachment forward, the angle beams push the backrest out. And as you can see, no additional motor was used since all of the power came from the robot's movement. Now let's look at passive mechanisms powered by triggers. This is the mechanism I used to push down the bench. It's basically a rubber band slider. The rubber band pulls the slider from the left to the right, which pushes the bench. However, we only want this to happen after the robot has lined up with the bench, not when the robot is at base. And so we need a trigger. When it is set off, the trigger powers the passive mechanism. In our case, our trigger needs to block the mechanism from working until it is pushed. When the trigger is pushed, it should allow the rubber band to pull the slider and knock down the bench. And so here is the trigger. As you can see, when it is pushed, the slider is allowed to move. This is because our trigger is connected to a blocker, which blocks the slider from moving until the trigger has been pushed. Watch carefully, right here. When the trigger is pushed by the bottom of the bench mission, the blocker moves back and out of the way of the slider, allowing the slider to move and complete the mission. This is what the mechanism looks like after it has been taken out of the attachment. Here's the slider, here's the trigger, and here's the blocker. As you can see right now, the trigger has not been pushed, so the blocker is preventing the slider from moving any further. When the trigger is pushed, the blocker moves back to allow the slider to move. On the actual attachment, as the robot pushes the mechanism forward, the base of the bench mission pushes the trigger back, causing the slider to move and completing the mission. The mechanism I used to drop the cubes also uses a trigger. The cubes sit here, and the trigger is down here. Since the trigger is attached at a 90 degree angle to the cube holders, when the trigger is pushed back by the base of the bench, the holders tip forward to release the cubes. This little flexible wall prevents the cubes from falling too far and missing their targets. This is what the cube dropping mechanism looks like after it has been taken out of the attachment. As you can see, the trigger is attached to the cube holder at a 90 degree angle, so that when the trigger moves back, the cube holder tips forward. And so with the cube in the cube holder, you can see that when the trigger is pushed back, the cube is dropped. On the actual attachment, as the robot pushes the attachment forward, the base of the bench mission pushes the trigger back, which drops the cube. Watch how the cubes drop when the trigger is pushed by the base of the bench mission. We've got one last mechanism to cover. There's one more cube to drop. The cube sits in here. And believe it or not, the trigger for this mechanism is actually the slider. Watch carefully. The slider holds the cube container up until the slider moves which is when the cube container falls down and the cube is dropped. All four of these mechanisms work together to remove the backrest, push down the bench, and drop the cubes. You might be wondering, why should I use these passive attachments? In this case, I use them because since the mechanisms are not connected to motors, I can leave the attachment on the field. However, the main benefit is that you are able to do more missions 
since you can save your motors for other mechanisms and other missions. And since I'm able to leave my attachment at the bench, I can also score points from the Innovation Project mission and two of the health units. Since the best way to learn about mechanisms is to actually build them, I have linked instructions to build the cube dropping mechanism and the rubber band sliding mechanism in the video description. Keep in mind that these are not complete instructions of my attachment, just the mechanisms that I used. I hope this video helped your team out. If you enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe for more tutorials coming out in the future about completing FLL replay missions.